All right, in this video, I'm going to be introducing uh, this idea of complexity analysis and uh, in a mathematical notation, which is big O notation. And complexity analysis has a lot to do uh, with performance. And so I've asked you to spend some time thinking about different things that might perfect, uh, affect performance, which is really, well, how long does it take to run my program? And, and there are lots of possible answers here. Um, one is just the speed of the computer. How fast is my CPU? How much RAM do, do I have? Do I have, you know, a hard drive or an SSD? Um, and this could be a little bit funny, right? Because I might have two different programs and maybe one computer is faster um, for program A and the other computer is faster for program B. But in general, right, we could spend money to get better hardware and try to make things run faster. Um, other things that matter, uh, maybe the speed of Python itself. Remember that Python is interpreting our Python code uh, translating it to something that the CPU understands. That's in terms of the instruction set. And, uh, and so trying to depending on the quality and efficiency of that, my program might run um, faster or slower. And it's totally possible that I could write my Python program and in a few years there's a new Python interpreter and, uh, and my program just starts running faster because of that. That, that happens. Um, now, now both of these things are not really related to the code I write. Um, what's more related to the code that I write is, well, what is my um, algorithm? And uh, an algorithm is kind of this general strategy for breaking down a problem in, into steps. Um, and so I'll just give an example of an algorithm for finding the largest value um, in a list. So, so what I'll do is I'll start at the beginning of the list and I'll kind of assume that first value um, is the biggest item until proven otherwise. And I'm just gonna loop over the list and each new item I have, I see, well, is it bigger than my previous biggest? And uh, and if it is, I'll, I'll replace that previous biggest with this new one. And by the time I've looked at each item in the list once, well, whatever is remaining in that biggest variable is the biggest item. And so notice I'm not writing any Python code here, uh, but I'm describing the steps for solving this problem. And, uh, and that's an algorithm, right? And I could implement that algorithm in Python or Java or any other number of languages. That's an algorithm. And, and there can be different algorithms for solving the same problem. And sometimes some will involve uh, more work than others. Uh, the last thing that's really important is, well, how much data um, are we dealing with? Uh, generally, when we have more data, things get slower. Um, that's not always true. And, and the question we're gonna care a lot about is, well, how much slower do they get as we double the input size? If I double the input size, does that mean it takes twice as long as to run? Or, uh, or maybe more or maybe less, right? That's something where I care about a lot. And so there's all these different factors. And, um, and this idea of complexity analysis, which we're gonna be looking at today, wants to focus on these last two details. This is kind of the mathematical heart um, of performance, right? And we aren't gonna think so much about, well, uh, you know, the speed of the Python interpreter or the CPU. We just wanna see like, well, how, uh, how efficient is our algorithm as the input size Rows, right? And, and kind of what we're going to do is we're going to try to measure how much work must be done. And so we're going to break the work down into steps. How many steps do we have to do as a function of the input size to solve to solve a problem? And so when you're thinking about this, it makes sense to make a lot of graphs like this, where um, the x-axis represents how much data I have. And we're going to talk more about how to count that. But for now, I'll just say, you know, our data is of size 5 or 10 and give that a variable and maybe um, n. Okay, and so that'll be our, our, our x-axis. And then on the y-axis, we're gonna have some measure of how much work we're doing. And, um, and I'm just gonna say, well, there's some number of steps that must be need to be done. And if you can finish in fewer steps, well, then, then it's faster. And so every algorithm I have um, is a function that takes n to the number of steps. And I can draw that function as a line. So here I have two, um, two algorithms, a and b. And for each of them, I can have some function that says, well, for this algorithm, given n, how many, how many steps do I have to do? And so I want you to think about this for a moment. Um, which of these algorithms is better? Would I rather have algorithm A or B, assuming they basically are both correct um, solutions to the same problem? <clears throat> so, so there's not really a right answer here. It kind of depends. I guess um, for this range of n values, uh, A is a lot faster, right? So um, or what I can see in this plot, well, I'd want to do A. But but if you're kind of looking carefully, you notice that as the data gets bigger and bigger, uh, it doesn't take any longer to do B. 
Um, but A is getting a little bit slower and slower over time. And so indeed, if I look at a very large um, input size, what I see is that eventually um, algorithm A starts to be a lot lot slower, right? And, and algorithm B would be better. And, um, and, and eventually these lines cross and there's a crossover point. And, and what you might think about is that to the left of that crossover point, I should use algorithm A and to the right, I should use, um, should use algorithm B. Right, so so really, I mean, there's multiple answers to this question. One, you could say, well, it depends on input size. Um, you might also say, well, if there's small inputs, it's fast, and I don't care. Um, if it's really big, then that's when it actually could be painful to wait for my program, and, and I kind of care about that. Right, so complexity analysis that we're going to be learning about today only cares about um, the really big inputs, and in, in that case, complexity analysis is going to say uh, B wins. Right, it's not going to care about that. Now. Um, when you're trying to think about performance, right, you don't want to have kind of one tool for thinking about performance. Complexity analysis is one tool, uh, but it's very often that you might be to the left of this crossover point. Um, and uh, for, for example, when I was an intern at Facebook, there was um, this guy on our team who would always go around saying, you know, I worry about small data. You know, everybody is kind of hyped like, hey, I care about big data, big data, yeah, yeah. And he's like, no, I'm gonna focus on small data. This small data actually shows up um, everywhere. Uh, maybe maybe think about the typical size of the data sets you've worked with. I mean, it's pretty hard to find a data set that's over one gigabyte in size, or, or even say a terabyte, uh, but a terabyte fits on one hard drive, right? If, if my whole computation can run on one computer on my laptop, is it really big data? Uh, maybe not, right? So you should think about this smaller port too. And for that, there's not so much of a theory, but well, you time how long it takes to run the code and kind of see what's faster. And, we, and we've done some of that in that last lecture. <coughs> okay, so something should be bothering you here. <coughs> and that is, well, what exactly is a step? Right, that's not been very well defined. Okay, so what is a step is the big question. And, and so let's think about this in, in, in the context of some actual code. So, so here I have some code and um and i have this input nums list with a bunch of numbers in it and um and maybe what i'll say is that my variable n is the size of that list i could say that that's the input size to this program and um and why don't you just pause me until you kind of look at this code and figure out what it's doing and then then once you've absorbed it then resume the video <coughs> okay so what i'm doing here is i'm looping over all of these numbers um, I'm checking if the number is odd, and if it is, I'm, I'm both counting it and kind of adding the total to a sum, and then at the end, I'm, I'm kind of dividing that sum by how many there are. So basically, I'm, I'm getting the average of all the odd numbers in the list, and, um, and so I need to break this code down into some number of, of steps. And um, the way I'm going to define a step is, well, very carefully, right, the words matter here, is any unit of work with bounded execution time. It doesn't keep getting slower uh, with growing input size. So you can see the step one where I say odd count equals zero. Um, that that kind of has this fixed cost, right? It, it doesn't get slower as I have more, uh, more items. Um, what, what about the third step where I say for num and in input nums? Um, does, that, does that get slower when I have um, input nums? And it turns out the answer is no. When, when I have more numbers, step three runs more time, but uh, more times, right? If I have a million numbers, that will run something like a million times, but each time it runs doesn't keep getting slower and slower as it, as it grows, right? So, so I could try to break down, at least in this example, I could say each one of these lines uh, is a step. They would match that, that definition, okay? Now, there are more ways to define step. So it's kind of a very general term. And so somebody else, a totally reasonable person, would come along and they could say, well, these are five steps. Um, even though the first step involves two lines of code, well, it's a unit of work that doesn't really keep getting worse as I have more, uh, more numbers, right? So I could absolutely um, kind of count or kind of break down steps in this way and identify them uh, in this way. And one of the reasons that uh, we want to do that is it's not really clear, um, you know, how much work it is based on how many lines of code. So kind of just going back and forth between these, you can see I'm changing that last step. Um, you know, there's lots of expressions that I could break up into multiple lines of code or have on a single line of code, right? So that's why we don't want to get too picky 
um, about saying that each step has to be exactly a line, right? Now, the other thing here is that the flip could be true. Um, so let's say I have this code where I'm checking if x is in L. That's going to give me a Boolean that I'm putting in the found variable. Now, even though I, I'm, as a programmer, not writing any loops there, the Python interpreter deals it with this by having a loop. It loops over everything in L and, and checks, well, is x item 0, is x item 1. And so, so even though that's one line of code, that's actually multiple um, steps inside of that. Right? I mean, as, as L gets bigger, it takes longer to run that. So I can't count that as a single step. Okay, this is a tricky one. Okay, can I break it down like this? Is this legal? And, um, and in particular, the suspicious thing is this third step, right? Can I, can I do this? Is that a single step? And, and, and probably the first thing you might notice is that how long it takes to run this code um, will depend on whether the number is even or odd. Right. I mean, if it's even, if it's even, I only have to do well, kind of this first check. Um, if it's odd, I have to run these three lines of code. So this this absolutely depends on the input size. Uh, but it turns out I'm still allowed to keep it as a as a step, right? And, and that goes back to the definition. It doesn't keep getting slower with growing input size, right? So for down here, uh, I have a fast case and a slow case. Uh, but the slow case doesn't keep getting slower and slower and slower as I have more and more numbers, right? So this is absolutely um, allowed, right? Even though that this step does not have a fixed cost. We're never, we're never trying to claim that a step has a, a fixed cost, and we're never trying to claim that all steps have equal costs, only that they have bounded execution time uh, as the input size keeps growing. All right. What about this? Is this one a step? And, and, and now, of course, a suspicious step is line number two. And this is absolutely not a step. And the reason is because kind of running that whole loop will take longer if there's more numbers. Right? The more numbers I have, the longer it takes to run, uh, run that whole loop. So this would not be a valid step. Right? The time to run step two depends on the input size. And it can keep getting slower and slower as we have more items. Okay, now I just want to make a note here, right? Like 90% of the time when you see loops, um, you know, the whole loop is not a step, but it, it could be but under that definition. Um, if I'm looping, you know, a fixed number of times, let's say I'm looping exactly 10 times, regardless of how big that list is, then I could count it as a whole step, right? So. I only really kind of get into trouble if I'm, you know, say looping over, um, you know, all the items in the list, right? Then in that case, uh, it can't be a step, right? Because the it gets slower and slower as I have more items. Okay, so that first piece, right? We are identifying the steps without really caring about how many times they they ran, right? We were just kind of looking at well how. How long does it take to run that step once? If that's bounded, it, it can be a step. Now I want to say, well, how many times does each step run? Okay, and so let's just work through some concrete examples here. Um, so I may say, if I'm breaking down steps this way, how many total steps will execute if, well, let's say the length of uh, input nums is, is 10. Okay, so how, how, how does this work? Well, that first step um, always executes once. Um, step number three, step number three is going to execute 10 times, right? I mean, there's 10 numbers, so it's going to execute 10 times. Um, what's a little bit more confusing is that the, the loop line for num and input nums will always be like n plus one. And that's the way, if, if you put in Python Tutor, you'll see what's happening here, right? When I have a loop, you know, I run that first part and then the body, first part and then the body, first part into the body. And then for the last time I run the first part and then I'm like, oh, there's mo no more numbers. So I'll kind of skip over the body and do that. So we're always kind of getting n plus one there. Um, not a super important detail, right? But that runs 11 times. And then this last piece of course will, will only run once. So I, I get 23 steps total. And if I wanted to, I could put that in a, in a formula. I could say that um, in total, there's going to be two times n 
plus three stats when I run this, regardless of how many um, input items I have, right? If I have 100, if I have 100 um, input items, then it will be 203 stats. Okay, uh, let's count the stats if I do it a little bit differently. So now I'm kind of going back to that first version where I counted each, each, each one. And I'm again assuming that I have 10 input items. And so maybe the way I'm going to do this, just to kind of talk through it a little bit better, um, is let me see here. I want to hide this sidebar, slide only, and um, a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through here and see how often each of these things execute and kind of take notes. So this first piece is trying to do what? This is trying to run once. Uh, this is trying to run once. Oh, that's trying to run once as well. Um, how many times is this thing going to run? Um, well, so I guess it's the 10 plus one, which gives me 11. And uh, then this, this line of code is trying to run once for each item, so that gives me 10. And um, this one, this one's kind of tricky, right? Because, well, it depends on what the numbers are. I mean, if they're all, if they're all even, I guess it would be zero times. I mean, if they're all odd, it would be 10. So, so maybe what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say something like zero to 10 and the same thing for the next one, right? I'll, I'll just kind of leave it vague, zero to 10. And then, then this last part that's outside of a loop, this is just one and one. And so I can add all of those up, but what, what do I get? I guess I get um, one, two, uh, 13, 23, 24, 25, Be between 25 and 45, um, steps, right? And, uh, and let me, I'm just trying to start playing the slides again. And, and so that's what I have here. And if I wanted to put that in a, in an equation, I would do that like down here. I would say that it's going to vary, um, depending on whether they're even and odd, I may do at least two N plus five steps. And if they're all odd, it could be up to four N uh, plus five steps. And, and, and so you can see that this is an example where the execution time uh, it doesn't just depend on the number of items I have, but it depends on their characteristics. Are they even or odd? And, and so generally when I'm kind of reasoning through this, what I'll do is I'll take the worst case scenario. I mean, not in, you know, it depends on what kind of complexity analysis you're gonna do. It's a broad field. Maybe you won't take the worst case, but 90% of the time I'll take the worst worst case. So my answer here would be, you know, worst case where I do four N plus five steps. Now, I've just done the same problem and gotten two different answers depending on how I'm breaking down my steps, right? Uh, in the first way where I just had a few steps, well, then I had 2n plus 3. In the second way, I get this upper bound of 4n plus 5. So you might be kind of starting to wonder, like, what is the point of this theory if it's not giving me these concrete um, answers? And, and so that will be, I'll begin to that in the next video. But let me hint at the answer a little bit. Uh, what's the difference between 2n plus 3 and 4n plus 5? Uh, the difference is no bigger than a constant factor. Okay. Um, answer 2, 4n plus 5, is never bigger than 2 times answer 1, which is 4n plus 6. Right? So, so, you know, I got a bigger answer in answer 2, but only by this fixed factor more. And in the same way, I mean, answer one is never bigger than one times factor one times answer two, right? So it's kind of no bigger than some constant factor of that. And and so what we're going to do here is we're going to say that, hey, even though we might not identify steps the same, um, our execution counts will vary by at most a constant factor. And so in the next video, we're going to try to develop a theory where we can ignore the constant factors and actually be rigorous about how we're um, kind of measuring complexity.